Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Yan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is actually a little bit different. I'm going to be looking at Fantasy Premier League. Now, this will be interesting to you if you play Fantasy Premier League, but it also should be interesting if you don't because I'm selecting a team out of loads of players in the Premier League who I think will score points. So it's interesting if you're a football fan. But before we do get into today's video, I'd like to request that you do subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the bell notification icon, as well as like the video, please. That would help me out a lot. All right then, Fantasy Premier League. I play it every single season. I'm not one of these people that just drop out after two months. I persevere, I stay in the game, but I often, frustrate myself and make too many changes or overthink you know my transfers and who I'm gonna play that day if you watch my channel and you're a subscriber you probably know I'm a bit of a football nerd I enjoy stats I look at form I look at opposition and you know what that can screw you up in fantasy football often you shouldn't or you think about the opposition you should only go with player form Form over fixtures, I believe the term is. Anyway, for those of you who aren't familiar how to play fantasy football, essentially you pick a squad of players with a hundred million pounds. Um, you have to sort of distribute that across your team. You can't just buy loads of Galacticos. So you've got a squad of 15 people. You've got to get 15 players out of a hundred million. So, you know, good players only cost like 10 to 13 million, but also you gotta get a couple of low costing players to accommodate, well, to essentially distribute your money. And that's where you find the real gems. Like last season, people like Ryan Fraser, he cost like six or 6.5 million. He was banging in the points. So you gotta find these special gems. I'm not saying I've got them, but I'm gonna go through my team today and hopefully they can do something. So let's pull up the formation page and take a look at my team. All right, there you can see my squad next to me. I'm gonna go through each player and tell you why I've picked them. Starting with the goalkeepers, Fabianski. Now, he, it's important to note at this point on Fantasy Premier League, you look at how well they did last season, these players. Um, there might be a slightly cheaper player that got a load of points last season and therefore you just pick them or you just think about their team. So Fabianski plays for West Ham, had a really good season last season, made loads and loads of saves, therefore got himself a load of points. West Ham look like they're keeping up their ambition, they're a good team, they got a good coach and you know what, he's not my first goalkeeper so I think for a second goalkeeper pretty decent Fabianski. So in my opinion it's worth having two decent goalkeepers. I know you like you can see next I've got Allison. He's pretty solid against any opposition. If Liverpool are going to be playing Man City and West Ham are going to be playing Burnley and they're at home, you switch them around, you put Fabianski in there. But I do have Allison. In my opinion, it's worth having a Galactico level goalkeeper. Now there's not many in the Premier League. I guess really you're looking at Edison and Allison, and maybe a few years ago, uh, David De Gea, but you know, Man United at the moment, I wouldn't take that risk. So Allison kind of selects himself for me, he's in. Right, let's run through some defenders. The cheapest player on my back line is Nathan Ake, and no, it's not because I've got some sort of sentimental Chelsea affiliation with him, he's a good player and he's cheap. Um, I know he's a centre back and generally when people get defenders on Fantasy Premier League they want to just get all full backs because you know they score assists and get loads of points because defenders get more points for offensive actions but looking at last season's you know points Ake for me I think is a good selection he does get the odd um, set piece goal and bonus points sometimes and he can get an assist and when Bournemouth get a clean sheet he's a very cheap option to get the clean sheet points. So Nathan Aki is in for me. And on the fullback theory, it's our friend Patrick Van Aanholt, Crystal Palace now. So he can score the odd goal, he'll get the odd assist. Not offensively huge numbers, but he plays for a Roy Hodgson solid Premier League team. They know how to lock it down. I know they've lost wan to United, but you expect Hodgson's team to be defensively resolute. And if Palace are at home, playing against sort of weaker opposition, it's definitely worth making sure you've thrown him in your 11 for that weekend because 
absolutely can keep a clean sheet and like I said he's, he's cheap enough that it's worth it really. Next up Luca Dean 6 million worth every penny in my opinion. I did a video a while back that's no longer on my channel about how good he is and how he basically Luca Dean's numbers and statistics match up against Andy Robertson of Liverpool. Luca Dean is a complete monster of a fullback. He's really good defensively but offensively he's really really good. He's a dead ball specialist. He takes free kicks. He can score goals. He can get a assists an absolute points monster easiest decision for me getting Luca Dean in really high scoring defender six million absolutely worth it get him in right I do have three Wolves players um which I was sort of umming and ahhing about but whatever I've done it so Doherty's in there plays wing back for Wolves Wolves are an excellent team it looks like they're getting better he gets loads of like assists he can um basically because he's a wing back it's essentially very it's very good to pick wing backs as defenders it's like when marcus alonso his first season under conte really really high scoring player because they get the defender points for offensive actions yet they're a wing back so often they're basically midfield level anyway if not higher up the pitch so Super, super simple for me. Doherty's got to be in there. Bolly's also in there as well. Not a wing back, but often got. He's one of those players that I looked at last season and he got a lot of points and you feel like he's a good player and he's not going to get any worse. So another centre back option that will probably get bonus points for defensive actions and Wolves absolutely will keep clean sheets. So Bolly will probably be sitting on my bench more than Doherty, but he's definitely worth getting in there to balance the books and just have a good cheaper player right midfield here's my Chelsea fan coming out Ross the boss Barkley Chelsea's form player of preseason top for assists top for goals he takes penalties apparently and he scores free kicks and he's six million on fantasy football I could wax lyrical about how good Ross Barkley's been for Chelsea in preseason and how we could expect that to continue but you know the facts are obvious he takes free kicks he takes penalties when he's on the pitch he scores goals he assists he's six million he's in your fantasy Premier League team right so here's my big boy spending Raheem Sterling I'm one of those people that you know don't tr put Salah and Sterling in and try and fit a team around him but Sterling's a forward for Man City he's listed as a midfielder um, on Fantasy Premier League he's 12 million he costs a lot but City are going to score a lot of goals and I think a lot of goals are going to be finished off by Raheem Sterling you need a City forward in there and if he's getting midfielder points for me it just makes sense Raheem Sterling next up Watford's Dekure central midfielder so not attacking midfielder but he does do the business he often runs games for uh, Watford can score goals can get assists can get bonus points because he sort of you know tears up games and has man of the match performance again a cheap option and for me it was just nice to have a Watford player in there and I was going to get Delefeu as a forward as a Watford player but then I had to rearrange some things you know what I'm happy with Decore in my team and next up we have Felipe Anderson now Felipe Anderson is an amazing player and I know West Ham didn't have to sell him and they just put him on a big contract but I thought genuinely that a massive club might have swooped in and bought Felipe Anderson from West Ham last season but He's back in there, like I said before, I think West Ham are going to be doing well this season, certainly solid, and he's going to be one of their bright sparks. Again, listed as a central midfielder, well, listed as a midfielder on Fantasy Premier League. Expect this guy to be getting forward numbers, I reckon he can get a chip in with decent goals and assists. Absolutely worth the money on Fantasy Premier League. Right, here's the risky Chelsea fan moment. I did put Christian Pulisic in after he scored those two goals in pre-season, but you know what? I think he is going to be a starter for Chelsea this coming season. I think he's going to... And a Chelsea starting winger of young, pacey quality under Frank Lampard like Pulisic, I thought he was going to cost like £9 million on Fantasy Premier League. £7.5 million for a young, talented guy who's trying to prove himself early doors. He's worth it for me. So, although he's not, you know, I don't expect him to get crazy numbers, I think £7.5 million for Pulisic could go up quickly if he gets the odd goal. Definitely worth it. So he's in there. Right, onto the forwards. And staying on the price tag of £7.5 million, I've got Jimenez of Wolves. Yes, FC Wolves I am. <laughs> Jimenez is good, he's not a mental high scorer, but for 7.5 million, um, he does score goals. He scored very highly last season. And again, expect Wolves to be as good as they were last season, if not better. It's, Jimenez isn't necessarily someone you'll always have on the pitch. You'll probably bench him quite a lot. But if Wolves are playing against a, say, Bournemouth, say a possession side that will let Wolves counter-attack, I see Jimenez getting one or two goals. So a 7.5 million pound striker, 
definitely worth it. Next up, Jamie Vardy of Leicester. Brendy Rodgers has given a new lease of life to uh, Jamie Vardy. A sort of swan song in the Premier League where he was like the form striker of last season since Rodgers came in. He'll score a lot of goals for this Leicester team. Um, I know they've lost for quite a while, but that shouldn't affect them going forward. They've got, you know, Tielemans on the permanent. They're a very attacking team, good counter-attacking team where Jamie Vardy will play on the shoulder. You might think nine million's a lot of money for quite an aging striker now, but he'll score goals. Um, maybe this is the last season I'll get Jamie Vardy in and who knows I might be trading him out soon for transfer because he's let me down but I think in terms of a striker that will score a lot of goals he's my go-to for the money I don't want to spend like 13 million on Aguero or 14 however much it is Jamie Vardy for 9 million makes a lot of sense for me. And finally, Josh King for Bournemouth. He's one of the strikers that you've only got 6.5 million left. You look who scored high last season, Josh King's there. He's um, Bournemouth created a lot of chances. They're an open, open attacking team. I see uh, Josh King scoring like, I don't know, maybe like 11, 12 league goals. So you pick and choose when you put them in for uh, Bournemouth, I think it was nearly like a Callum Wilson decision, but for me, Josh King makes a lot of sense. Um, I stuck him in, 6.5 million. We'll see if he lasts. Obviously worth mentioning that I've picked these players looking at the season as a whole. You can overthink it and think, right, I'm going to pick my players for the opening fixtures. For example, me picking Pulisic and Barkley when Chelsea's first game is at Old Trafford. But I wanted to think beyond that. The first game form isn't really settled into the Premier League yet. So it kind of made sense for me to just think who's gonna be good this season. All right, that's enough for the formation screen for the moment. Now, I don't claim to be an expert at Fantasy Premier League. I've just tried to explain my decision to you guys and built this team. So hopefully you can give me some tips. Why don't you get down in the comments, let me know who you chose in your Fantasy Premier League team and why. And also let me know if you disagree with my decisions. And you know what? I'm gonna make my own league for this channel for Fantasy Premier League. And I'm going to put the league code down in this description so all you lot can join and beat me at Fantasy Premier League. If you have enjoyed the content, guys, please do like the video, comment down below, and remember to subscribe if you are new. Also, you can become a patron and gain exclusive access to Q&A content on my Patreon for $1 a month. I will put that link down in the description as well. And feel free to follow me on social media at Football Yannick, which is on Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, guys, today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Enjoy the football, and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I laugh me, baby.